Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. We're feeding. It's pretty cool this evening, but you know the bees still need to be fed. It's first or second day of October, and this is the time we really go through our colonies here in Tennessee and make sure they're where they need to be. Now, I've gone through several in this yard. We have over 50. Some of them are right where I want them. Some really need a lot of poundage, and this is one that's right in between. So I wanted to show you that, and then I'm going to show you how we're feeding our bees. All right, so we got a frame feeder here. We've got four other frames. I'm standing in front of this four-way pallet, and it's cool. It's late in the day. It's not a great time to be doing this, but here we are. Hence the gloves, right? All right, so here's an edge frame. And if the edge frames are really full, that's a good sign. This one uh, is pretty full, but it's not all the way full. And we have not fed these colonies since the first week of August. And most of this is the real deal. It's honey. It tastes nice if you like goldenrod. But see all this empty space right here? I really want that full. I'm going to check one in the middle here real quick. Um, just looking at the top, most of these frames look full, but I'm still looking at a, probably a box that's only about 70%. And I want this box 100% full. So we got this frame feeder over here we're going to be using. Just one second. All right, this one's not as full. You still see some of the nectar. That might have been some of the buckwheat that's uh, behind Laurel. Most of it's gone to seed. And I don't care if it gets in there. The deer are starting to chow down on it pretty good. We can see a lot of, uh, well, a pretty decent bit of nectar, but we're not adding big amounts this time of the year, so now's the time to get it on. We're feeding w roughly 1.5 to 1. Uh, you know, I don't know exactly what it is ratio-wise, and I'm not one of those people that's a real big stickler about it. I guarantee you I haven't made a true 1 to 1 or 2 to 1 in probably 10 years. Yeah, these bees are loving this attention this late in the evening. It's going to be dark pretty soon. All right, so I'm just going to smoke them back down. Now, normally when we're feeding, you know, Laurel's not holding the camera. She's doing this feeding. I'm popping the lids and then putting them back on. We'll wear out a yard of 50 colonies in 10 minutes or less. A little bit of a, you know, winding up the cord and whatnot. So we got this uh, hose right here, and we're just going to... Let her go to it. You can just see it filling up down in there. You just kind of slow it down. Now you can make this go a heck of a lot faster. Try not to let it overflow like that, but it, it's hard not to. And uh, you get, some, get a little bit of robin going sometimes if you overflow it. So those bees will be able to get down in there and suck that. It'll be gone real quick. I'm going to throw that lid back on. Now I'm going to show you some more stuff here in a second. Check out these bees right here, though. This syrup isn't hot. It's a, it, it's you know probably around 70 degrees. There's a lot of foam on top from all the agitation of our pump system, which I'm going to show you here in a second. You can just see how the bees are going down and just sucking it up. They're not going in there and drowning. Bees can drown in these frame feeders by the thousands even if they're sick or if it's really thick and cold syrup. This is not super thick. I mean, it's thicker than water, but you know, so is blood. And uh, <laughs> uh, anyways, but the bees are doing just fine. I got this float here, but they don't really need it. Healthy colonies, it's, it's, co it's cool right now. I'd say we're probably in the mid 50s right now, Fahrenheit. So the bees are really starting to condense, getting a little agitated at their beekeepers for keeping them open for just a YouTube video. But we got more to show you. All right, so let's feed these colonies real quick. So Laurel spoils me quite a bit because it's really slow having to do this by yourself. It's a lot rougher and more spillage, and awkward, and way slower. Ah, come on. But yeah, when you know, usually one person's taking care of the lids, the other person's job is just to keep filling them on up like that. I'll straighten those out here in a second. 
So basically, what you want to do, those already had it done to them. Just have yourself a smoker. You don't even have to have this if you're fully suited. Bees don't like it sometimes, but you just give them a little puff of smoke, push the bees down, mainly block the pheromone. And uh, a lot of times, you know, what we're doing is just offset the lid back just a little bit. You know, just go to town. Put that one right there. Straighten that one second. I like that one right there. That one's got a pretty good bit. It doesn't look like it hardly needs much, but we're going to give it a little bit anyways. Chug-a-lug, chug-a-lug. There you go, girls. Woo! That one didn't appreciate the attention. Because some women just don't appreciate a man's charm. Sometimes Laurel gets that way with me. Sometimes there's not a whole lot of charm involved either, though. She's giving me the look over there. So, moving on to these. Um, so, over here... We've got our double screen hive over here. We're setting up some more like that. And it's really cool because it's just benefiting from this nice double down here. You, you've probably noticed some of these have honey supers on them. I've probably got five, six over here with uh, honey supers on them. Because the fall flow is so good. I was going to see if I can make a little bit of fall honey. And uh, we might just make a little bit this year. Not a lot. I really don't try to make a bunch of fall honey prerequisite for making it whenever I do try is you know, they got their brew chamber they got to have this box full and then if they can fill up more up into here that they don't need fantastic we'll take it but very few make that cut this late in the year and very few fall flows are that good look at all those bees up there in this double screen board and uh, we're just going to help them out just a little bit Especially little colonies, they need to feed the most. They just don't have the, the bee power to get all that golden rod. So like right now, there's just all kinds of bees down in here. Look at these if you can. And uh, just, you can see how some are floating down in there and whatnot. I promise you, every single one of those is going to be able to work themselves out long as there's not something already wrong with them this one right here won't even come up for air it's too busy sucking away I've seen this so many times where the bees will hold on below the surface of the syrup wait till they filled up their honey crop let go and float to the top and walk right on out yeah there it goes right there just walk right on out filled its tank up ready to go um, healthy bees are pretty tough that's the secret all right, so there's that one right there. This hive obviously isn't going to get any because we're hoping to pull a little bit of honey from that. Um, I actually meant to probably look at that super before I fed this one, but I got a little bit ambitious, so I'll have to wait till later this week. And, uh, you know, we basically cruised through the yard. So let's look at the feeding system really quick. Let me turn this off. Ah, finally. So, honestly, if it wasn't for the videos, that thing wouldn't have been on that long. It's just gorgeous over here. It's just quiet. Crickets, hummabees, all that stuff. And this is just so disruptive. But I've got it only on about a third of its power when I was running. It gets real loud when it's fully cranked. The only time I run it wide open is when we're trying to empty this thing, clean it out, or fill it up or agitate the uh, the syrup. As we're mixing it and dropping the syrup down in there, we're running this water through and agitating it and mixing it. So there's no mixing involved on our part. We just let the, the motor cycle it out. And there is a little bit of leakage here. I need to put a little more Teflon tape, but it's really not that bad, especially if I was to go up there and shut that at the bottom of this tank. All right. So now, it's not pulling anything out of the tank, not getting so much pressure down there. This We had this thing filled up to here just a couple hours ago, and we've been feeding away today. 
And still got a little bit left. We'll do this tomorrow. But it just it pulls out of here, puts it into the tank, shoots it up through this pipe, and drops it back down in. And obviously our, our syrup goes in the top as well and just mixes it up. I've got a couple heating elements I can put down in there if I need to warm the water. If I'm making a really thick syrup and it's not summertime, then it's nice to warm the water up a good bit. If you're making 1 to 1 or even 1.5 to 1 or somewhere around that ratio and the syrup's hot, you know, 80 degrees, 70 degrees, something like that, or hotter, try not to get it too hot, that really is no problem. But on these nights where it's dropping down about 45 degrees, it gets just like honey real slow. As you can see, I've got a tea up here. And it's right now, it's probably about 25% shut at the most, just to get a little bit of back pressure, run it through this pipe right here. I can totally shoot so much pressure out of that hose. I mean, it's like a, I, I could probably get it to jet about 25 feet out of that discharge line right there, but no reason for it. The bees don't appreciate that. And syrup's expensive, let me tell you. So anyways, not a whole lot of fancy stuff going on here. Just a bunch of homemade parts. Some of it's purchased. Um, some of it's pieced together. Just all kinds of different things. This pump came from Harbor Freight. My first pump was a $100 used pump. And we wore that thing out. And now uh, we got this one this year. You don't have to get any really fancy systems. Probably got bee valve. Oh, there's a bee on the camera. Hog in the glory. Yeah, get out of there. But anyway, so if you have any questions about what we're doing, oh, real quick, this is an important little side note. So, literally, when we had a little over 225 gallons or so in this tank, and we're talking just well over a ton of weight. This is an aluminum bed, which I'm hoping eventually to upgrade it a little bit because it's just not able to handle some of the weight of what I put on here when I'm hauling a lot of syrup. I'll put three, sometimes even four totes worth of weight on this truck. And it, the truck can handle it, but the bed's a little weak. But th this uh, metal bottom on this tote right here will slide on this aluminum like nobody's business. And it doesn't matter if you've got two straps up here, crank down, it wants to slide. It is, there's nothing like nearly seeing a tote of syrup slide off of your truck. Yeah, you'll have nightmares. <laughs> and being a, a truck driver, um, you just have those uh, those nightmares of flipping a load or running off the road. There's, especially when you're driving like I am mostly through Kentucky and Tennessee. Goodness, especially y'all in Kentucky, I don't know how in the world you survive up there on those roads that are skinnier than my truck bed. Anyways, friction mats. Now this one right here is just like an exercise mat. You can a lot of times get them on sale. There's also some friction mats made for this out there, but they're very expensive. It makes all the difference in the world. I would rather have just this friction mat and one strap than to have this strap, two straps, and no friction map on, mat on this thing. Um, definitely a lot of force when you're driving and that this water's just sloshing, sugar water sloshing back and forth and sliding around. Um, do a lot of damage so anyway it's just something to be careful with and uh, we got we're gonna get out of here and uh, thanks for watching the videos if you have any questions on our feeding system leave them below